Hi everyone, Dr. Susan Brown, nutritionist, medical anthropologist, and director of the Center for Better Bones. You know, we've been away from the office at the Better Bones Love Your Body, Love Your Life retreat, and actually haven't caught up with a lot of questions from Facebook. So I'm going to start these today, and this week we'll try to answer as many questions as we can. The first question is from Mary, and it's about homeopathic medicine. Interestingly enough, at the Himalayan Institute, where we did our retreat, I was able to interview a wonderful homeopath, Dr. Demers, who's the medical director down there, and she explained to us so much about the really wonderful medicine that is homeopathic medicine. So Mary had a question. She is actually in treatment for breast cancer. She's on the drugs that are estrogen-suppressing drugs, and she's also on the bone drug Prolia. So she wanted to know, could she use the homeopathic remedy along with the prolia and the cancer treatment. Well, Mary, you certainly can. Uh, you mentioned this, this Symphonium 30C, a low-dose therapy like that you could do yourself. But the very best thing to do would be to contact a qualified professional homeopath like Dr. Demers. And in fact, just last night, I interviewed another famous homeopath from India who does consultations all over the world. And I'll soon have that posted on my website. But you may, you may in your area have a good local homeopath who can help kind of rebalance your whole body at the same time you're going through these treatments. So yes, I think homeopathy, homeopathy is perfectly fine to do. If you self-prescribe uh, yourself, use low dose like the 30C you mentioned, but also consider talking with a professional homeopath. It's a wonderful medicine and like, uh, like Dr. Demmer said, it's the only magic bullet she's seen. Your case is complicated, Mary. I don't mean to pretend it's easy, but homeopathy could help with some of the side effects and symptoms. I'm getting a lot of questions about bone drugs. And I'll read you a couple of them. And my answer is kind of similar to many of them. Lene says, I'm new to your program, and I'm desperately seeking a solution beyond pharmaceuticals. I'm 57 years old and had a total hysterectomy at the age of 30. We know right away that can be a problem for bone. I took estrogen therapy for 12 years, so until she was 42, she was on estrogen. Since then, I'm fighting a losing battle with osteoporosis. I've taken Boniva, Actinel, Advil, and then three years of Prolia, which she says it isn't working anymore. So now her doctor wants her to start Forteo, um, and she thinks probably her issue is that she didn't have enough hormones when she was young. Well, it's true. She probably was seven or eight years without hormones and that menopause usually occurs at 50. She stopped estrogen at 42 or so. But you know, the issue here is to try always, if you can go a little deeper, <clears throat> to find out the cause of bone loss. So I'm going to suggest you look, Lynn, at the medical workup, the test we suggest people take if they have osteoporosis, parathyroid, loss of calcium in the urine, vitamin D, a whole list of tests. Make sure you've had those tests. And then once you've had them, kind of go back to every step of the program, the diet, the alkalizing, the exercise, the stress reduction, the meditation. Obviously, your situation is complicated, but you can always do a great deal to boost immunity like, for example, with the proper supplements in the alkaline diet. So let's all take a second look. We always say if the doctor says it's important enough to take bone drugs, it's important enough to try to find out what the causes are. And I think there's probably more cause than just that very early hysterectomy. Sharon writes in a similar vein, I have osteoporosis and my doctor is concerned, and my doctor is concerned that I have a compression fracture. So the first thing, Sharon, I'd want to make sure, do I really have a compression fracture? You said you've lost some height, but a lot of times people lose height, and it's just a posture issue, a weakening of muscles, a compression of disc, and not a fracture. So ask him to figure this out. They can do the vertebral deformity assessment on the bone density machine, or they can do an x-ray. Check it out. Make sure you have, make sure he guarantees you you have a fracture. <clears throat> And she, the doctor is suggesting that prolia would be a good idea, but you are concerned about the side effects. And then she said, Avista. Well, Avista is a bone drug. It's not nearly as strong. It's not, not very effective, really. It certainly doesn't help hip fractures at all. 
And Prolia is a new drug, stronger than Fosamax, that does halt bone breakdown, but it has a little problem, as Sharon probably knows, that about 6% of the people who take this drug develop fractures after they stop it, spinal fractures, because the drug is so strong, they get a rebound effect. And so they have to stay on drugs really after that. They have to go on another drug after Proli, and they have to stay on other drugs. So Sharon, kind of the idea is, one, make sure if you did have a fracture, and two, really get serious about looking for the causes of bone weakness. Again, I can't emphasize enough, looking at our medical osteoporosis workup, those five or six pages you'll find on the website, taking it right to the doc and say, doc, let's get these tests before we talk about bone drugs. That's been one of the campaigns of the Better Bones Foundation over the last couple years to try to encourage women to really request a proper workup if the doctor thinks the problem is serious enough to take a bone drug. So Frankie writes in the same kind of vein, I, I was told that I was borderline. My doctor immediately prescribed Fosamax. When I questioned the borderline, he, the, he said the score, my score was 2.6, minus 2.6. <clears throat> I'm not fond of taking medication, and I take it only on an ad knees basis. Most everything I've read about Fosamax has scared me. But my doctor stated you will need to take this, but the doctor suggested take one pill every other week. So Fosamax is often given one pill a week. This doctor said one pill every other week. It's an interesting thought. I've heard physicians tell me if a person's very small, very lightweight, they could take a lower dose. Um, you know, you could, uh, I'm not sure that every other week is the good way to do it. A lower dose might be helpful uh, when they give it daily. But you know how you can find out? And this is fairly important. You want to know what your bone, Fosamax is a drug that halts bone breakdown. So number one, before you take the drug, you want to know, do you have high bone breakdown? And this is a bone breakdown marker, a simple urine test or a blood test. We talk about it a lot on our website, the NTX test or the CTX test. We can help you order those if you're having any problem, if your doctor won't do it. You first want to know if you have high bone turnover. And then if you do have high bone turnover, you would like to make sure that that Fosamax is working to correct that problem. So maybe four or five months into Fosamax, you go back and test it. About 15% of the time, that drug does not work to halt bone breakdown. It won't work if you're vitamin D deficient, and it won't work if you don't need it. And it may not work if you're low turnover. So again, find out a little bit more. Find out a little bit more because these drugs you can only use for a certain period of time, like maybe five years because they're too dangerous to use longer. And then when you stop them, everyone I've seen loses everything they gained and maybe a little bit more. So you want to really think about this carefully, see the big picture. And mostly, if there's true bone loss, if there's true bone weakness, try to do the medical workup to find out why. Then Sandra writes, I have just found your webpage and I'm really impressed. I'm 74. I had been prescribed by my doctor to take Fosamax, and I took it for nearly 15 years without a break. And that's a long time to use that drug. Um, I was totally oblivious to the side effects. Two years ago, I was experiencing some stomach and heart palpitations. I stopped the drug, and then last October 2018, I fractured. Um, I fell and fractured the neck of my femur. After having a scan, I was told I had osteoporosis. She wants to know, is it too late for me to try to reverse osteoporosis by taking supplements? Well, what happens is, of course, taking the supplements, the 20 key nutrients in the right doses in the right forms, alkalizing, building strength again, in your case, maybe going to a physical therapist, building strength around the hips. As you build the muscles around the hip, you will build that bone density. Of course, you can strengthen the bone. Um, you know, with these long periods of using these drugs, they suppress bone breakdown so much that you can have a greater tendency to fracture because when you halt bone breakdown, you also halt bone formation. So the bone doesn't get to repair itself, doesn't get to break down little weak spots and put in new strong spots. So yeah, I don't know the particularities of your situation and I'm not a physician. I'm just suggesting you do all the life supporting things 
and work with your doctor to make sure there's no hidden cause of this bone weakness and work with a physical therapist to see if you can build strength and of course alkalize that's extremely important for for regaining bone health there's still a few more on drugs let's see if we can get through them all